Isaiah 50 and verse four. When you get it, give me that thumbs up emoji. I know on the phone, you guys are probably already there. Uh, if you don't know where Isaiah is, you are missing an opportunity on Sunday morning for Sunday school. Amen. Isaiah 50, I'm going to read, start with verse 4. We're going to go to verse 9. It said, the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offer my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me, who will condemn me. This will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Amen. Lord, add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his most holy word. So our sermonic theme, uh, as we begin to close off and finalize this preaching and teaching, uh, we're conquering warfare, and um, you can put a part one by it as we'll get into part two uh, on next week. So conquering uh, warfare. Look, let me, let me say here that I, I pray that within this preaching and teaching on warfare, that what it does is that it makes us much more aware of the spiritual forces lined up uh, against us. Always important in uh, understanding warfare is, spiritual warfare is Ephesians 6 and 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. That, that is the essence of spiritual warfare. We are up against uh, forces in which uh, uh, are difficult for us to even touch and sometimes comprehend because we can't see them, but they are at work in culture and environment around us, right? You know, uh, 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 how do people stay away from church for so long? Warfare. You know, how do uh, families uh, 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 part ways? Warfare. Uh, 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 how do uh, we end up uh, 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 depressions or addictions or jails and in and out of jail? There are warring spiritual factors that create these sometimes undeniable temptations to do wrong and and the and the ripple effects um, um, end up in some detrimental uh, circumstances that occur in our in our lives that could end up in deaths uh, suicides uh, 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 um, uh, family breakups prisons and jails uh, there are these warring factors, right? And, 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 and it poses different challenges for different people. Some of us are born into circumstances that are highly uh, great and positive, and others are born into dysfunctional, uh, abusive circumstances, and then will then be able to uh, uh, suffer the consequences thereof. Some of us end up in stuff. Uh, that we never thought we would be in, uh, and, and then are fighting our way to get out of it. But, but what salvation is set to do is to enlighten us to these circumstances, because you can't fight against what you don't know, right? right? Because you will, you will succumb to it, 
and, and not even and, and not even recognize that oh this is the spiritual weakness wickedness that is in the high place so that so the saint has got to uh, uh, recognize and accept this this uh, this warfare these warring factors because if we if we fail to do so then we will be what 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 scripture indicates uh, that we should not become if we go uh, I'm, I'm gonna read to you from Ephesians four and thirteen which says until we reach all unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become church the, the word says mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of the people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, uh, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is in Christ. So, so if we don't gather and attain that spiritual maturity, right, warfare against us uh, can make us that infant that's tossed back and forth through every teaching. And then we'll become subject to trickery, right? Craftiness and deceitful scheming, right? You will, you will avoid going to church because of specific people within the church, right? Instead of coming to church right? with, with, with a focus on the cross and the blood, right? Because what trickery will do is that it will continue to have you focus upon the imperfections right, of saints. You, you, will, you will, as the pastor, the pastor's imperfections will be there weekly, daily, others you will see in leadership. It, it, is, it is amazing uh, that as, as young people in churches where we grew up, we had no idea of the imperfections. Of, but the, they put up a very good front, right? I mean, but now as we're older, we had to say, wait a second, if imperfections going on with us, it certainly had to be some imperfections going on with them. Right. But as we grow, we then begin to see, right, these challenging aspects of, 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 of life. And we have to be careful, right, because, because God will become disappointed with us, and then we won't even be able to be aware of it. Revelation 3.16 says, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. That's the Lord speaking now that if we allow ourselves to go that far to be the lukewarm saints, we won't be pleasing to the Lord, right? It never says for us to be perfect, right? It never said we can strive towards perfection, right? but we must strive towards it. So, so, so we have to be careful here that we don't over, become overcome with warfare, but that we have a confidence when we approach it. Therefore, we understand warfare's design and purpose, right? Which is designed to remove us from God's favor, to block the connection that occurs between us and God, which, which, which if, that, if that is broken off, then it allows us to descend into the dark places, right? right? And that's where we don't want to be. The Hebrew boys fought against it by saying we're not going to pray to no to no idol god to a king right we're not going to do it christ falls against it in the temptations that we studied the temptations of christ that were there they knew that the devil was coming at christ after his fasting period warfare attempts to capture us at times of weakness right in spiritual challenges, in the midst of our greed, in the midst of our depression, right? right. We, then, we then will seek an opportunity to run away from the gospel instead of running to the gospel, okay? And that's what we have to be careful of. Now, this scripture today, right, it, it, it comes here. It, now, this is the here I am, send me prophet, right? With Isaiah, so 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 Isaiah 
accepted his call, uh, 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 but it still was not told to him the clear path that would be laid out for him just for telling his own brothers and sisters the truth. Okay? So it's easy for us to say, here I am, send me, okay? without understanding the depths of the challenges that come before us, right? Saints are unaware, right, 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 uh, of, of, of what it means now to accept service and, you know, and position in God's church, right? A lot of times, I mean, and, and a lot of times, again, again, we, you know, we have to be careful because sometimes budding saints okay, will see us at our worst and then say, I don't want to be part of no deacon. I don't want to be no preacher. Uh, and I certainly don't want to be at no church meeting, whether it's in person or on Zoom. Amen. Amen. We got people who got church meeting anxiety. If you mention it, uh, they're going to move to another state, right? They cannot go through another church uh, a meeting. Uh, uh, Senator Raphael Warnock, who is the uh, pastor uh, of Ebenezer Baptist Church down in Atlanta, uh, who gracefully won uh, you know, the Senate race, uh, down there in Georgia, he was speaking against uh, guns and people. And and one and one of the persons from the rally said, "Look, look, uh, uh, Reverend Warnock, we want guns everywhere. We want guns in, in churches. We want guns, you know, in the house." And, <laughs> and Senator Warnock says, "Guns." He said, "Guns in churches. Have you ever been to a church meeting? You know, <laughs> do you really want a gun up in there? You know." He tells that story much, but he does go through the challenges that our spirituality that it takes, right, as we encounter these challenges uh, um, that we go through. So the here I am, send me, Isaiah, uh, 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 his mission becomes a brutal mission where we see the young man uh, who was brought in the temple with doors shaking and angels flying, a seraphim flying, to now the prophet who has preached the truth at a physical uh, a cost, as, as a, an abusive uh, cost. He has been brutalized for doing the work of the Lord, right? Now we see this here. Now let's go to Isaiah 4 and please keep, keep your words out. Uh, you know, we'll go through this and, uh, and we'll be able to uh, 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 get this preached here for you. But in verse four, the sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the words that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away, right? So in the midst of the warring factors that were coming against him, he can fully say that he did not turn away. OK, you see that in that verse five. Right. I've not been rebellious. Right. I've not turned away. I've not moved away from my calling. Right. So the prophet has indicated and confirmed that he stayed true to the here I am. Send me. OK, I've spoken to the weary and have continued to receive instruction and not rebellious. I've not turned away or been rebellious. Right. Now, now we'll get people now who will take on responsibility or position, especially, you know, uh, working within the kingdom, right? And will quit when it get too hard, right? Okay. Because the, the design right, is for us to be challenged, right? Keep in mind here now that when we come up and when we join the church, right? The devil gets busy immediately okay, to destroy our faith. That belief, right? That belief that, 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 that we took to walk down that aisle, whether it was by ourselves or with family. Right? Warfare then, right? Warfare was preventing us from coming into church in the first place. Once we have gotten over that victory, the devil doesn't now say, oh, okay, it's over. They got to the church, so I'm done. No, the devil ramps up new, new, new weapons and new opportunities to destroy faith. And instead of instead of us moving towards the cross, find ways to move us away from the cross. 
And in the challenge of dealing and working within the body, there is warfare that comes that makes us doubt whether we're worthy or whether we can sustain the challenge of being able to work within it without quitting, right? Can a preacher keep preaching, right? Okay. Can a deacon keep serving? Can an usher stay on the door, right? Okay. Even with those challenges that are coming at them, you know, completely, right? Can a teacher uh, keep teaching the word? Okay. Can he do it? Right. Now, now verse six, now verse six, you know, intensifies the challenge that he has, right? Verse six, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who poured out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Okay. Wow. Now, now it definitely parallels the challenges that Christ would have and, and there will, and that would be the belief of the prophetic groundwork laid for what Christ would deal with. However, we see here that, that, that there is a group here that don't want to hear the truth. And is willing to hurt him physically so they don't have to hear the truth, right? Then that could be the same here, right? right, right? Person will, persons will love the church till they hear words. And when the word exposes, right, the challenges or the sins that people may be a part of, right, it may be easier then to not come to church because you don't have to change and you don't have to go through the process of change or transformation. That's what this is about, right? right. If the word, if the word, like a person may not want to forgive somebody, but then they don't want to hear the word that tells them you need to forgive, you need to love. Because that now forces them right, to confront their own demons. But as long as that warfare can stay there, it says you don't have to talk to them, you don't have to forgive them. Let's call up somebody after church and talk about them. Warfare has won. Okay? War ha you know, warfare has won. Warfare will get you from everything to talking about what a person got on to where a person parked their car. Okay. And don't let war something, I mean, demons come out the ceiling, come, come, come out the ceiling when somebody is sitting in the seat that you normally sit in. God's church, look, when we come back to the church, are y'all laying claim to old seats? Or y'all gonna try to do new seats? Right? What's it gonna be? Now, 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 again, now, we've seen the difficulty of the journey for the work of the Lord, right? But, but, but we see here the prophet's refusal to turn away from the purpose for which he was called, right? That's his, like, that's his thing, sustainability, confidence, conquering the warfare, right? Now, the agreement here to serve God Serve, serve God calls us to serve, and then forces and then forces begin to weigh in, right? To make us quit. You see what's happening here with the prophet here, right? They know that there are those of us in service for the Lord. It seems like once we answer the call, here come the devil himself to create the tension and the challenge just to get us to quit, right? It happened now, and again. But the devil can be real busy in the midst of the pandemic, right? Can be real busy, okay? But, but to be clear, the devil was in full throttle before we even heard of the pandemic. Come on, the people whom we lost in great positions, right? who, haven't, who haven't died, right? They just advocated responsibility because it got hard. That's it, that's it, right? That's it. Countless number of, 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 of pastors. And I, and, I can, and I can get it, becoming, being called to the pastor. I mean, you know, you look at the scripture, you know, you look at a man about, okay, when I start preaching, 2,000 souls per week is gonna get saved, that's it. 
it's going to be a hundred thousand people right and then then now you confront it with preaching and the fact that you got a furnace that can't work right the furnace was not part of seminary right that was not in any that was not i don't even see furnace in the bible i may see fire right okay or that deacon, boy, I, 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 I mean, every deacon, right? When it was announced, y'all was going to be deacons for the church. Hey, Lord, it was like angels was flying around y'all for all the deacon training, right? That ordination, right? Angels flying around. You got settled in. You got now on your, on your tie, okay? Now you got with your suit and now the phone ringing, right? That's your break in. That's your break in. As much as we tried, you know, as much as we tried to warn you, to give you a heads up, and then you caught up in this challenge between pastor and congregation. You got pastor saying one thing, you got congregate, you caught up in this tension. And then sometimes the best thing could be is uh, let me unplug my phone and let me move to Antarctica, right? Here, up, up there, nobody knows me as a deacon. All right. That's why we always appreciate people for longevity. Man, you've been in a position this long, you done took up some stuff, right? Well, then once you're back there on that door, poor guy, if anybody should, could do a letter of resignation, right, before service in, it's got to be the usher on the door or the choir director trying to direct people on, on singing, right? Okay, all right, right. It's all these. It's all these particular challenges. And don't let me get into the trustees, right? We man, we we set up. We always set up, and we put people on the spot to make them say yes to being a trustee, right? We do that, right? Then they get in there and they like, Lord, what happened? What have I got myself? Trustees went up, turn against other trustees to confirm with the congregation. Hey, I didn't agree to that. I didn't agree. I mean, I was at the meeting, right? Right? Trustee, trustees will start denying other trustees like Peter denied Christ. Aren't you a trustee? No, I'm not a trustee. Aren't you a trustee? No, I'm not a trustee. I thought we did we just vote you in? Nope, that was not me. I, I am not a trustee. I was not a part of this mold downstairs, right? Okay, but that's what happened there. That's the wolf. It comes pow, pow. And, espe and especially within the church, right? It comes in, it comes in the church. Warfare, no warfare. I mean, the past will get warfare like, gosh, man, I, I ain't seen such and such in the pew for some weeks. What's up? Right? But we begin to focus on the on the inconsistencies and the imperfection of flesh instead of what we can trust in God, right? That's the challenge, right? I mean, that's the challenge. These challenges, they become overcome with a keen focus on the task at hand. What are you called to do? Okay, okay. And the focus then must be on that as we see the prophet's focus here, okay? So you must have a confidence, right, that arises in your service that goes against the warring factors that are designed to break your commitment. Because if your commitment could be broken, then they're looking at the opportunity to break the church. How do churches break apart? How do churches descend into nothing? warfare went in and people fell victim to it instead of overcoming it and say we're not going to do this you have to do the same thing in marriage you have to do the same thing with your kids you have to do the same thing with your you know with your employment with your opportunities that you get warfare and say nope uh-uh i'm gonna trust the lord come on look at what the prophet says here in verse in verse seven Right. I mean, look at this here, church. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced 
Therefore have I set my face like Clint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who then will bring charges against me. Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will, hear the, will, will eat them up. In all, what, in all what happens, in all what happens here with this, in all what happens, okay, we see someone who undeniably trusts the Lord. If you read throughout Isaiah, you see a praying prophet, right? Who is sure and most certain that the Lord has not forgot about him, right? Verse seven, the Lord, the sovereign Lord, he helps me. I will not be disgraced. In the midst of this physical abuse, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint and I know I will be put to shame. Verse eight, he who vindicates me is near. Right? Who then will bring charges against? I want to see the accuser because the judge is on my side. The judge is on my side. Let him confront me because what church? My God is near. The sovereign Lord is my redeemer. Come on, we see it throughout the Bible here. Job had it after losing everything and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. Naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Christ had it in the wilderness with being tempted by the devil or even the proclamation of these Hebrew boys uh, 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 where they say in Daniel, if the God whom we serve is able to save us from the blazing furnace and from your power, then he will. But even if he does, your majesty may be sure that we will not worship your God and we will not bow down to the gold statue that you have set up. Christ, even in the garden, uh, 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 with concerns about, about the future that beholds him with the proclamation, you know, about being forsaken, but then awakens to not my will, but thine will, O oh Lord. The confidence in accepting here what Christ does, in accepting the brutality of the decision and the judgment of this earth that can be equipped with a crown of thorns and a brutal beating with nails and hands and feet but then it's overcome with victory on Sunday morning with resurrection. Oh yeah, he lives. I know my savior lives. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, church. That's it, it's the recognition that we got to fight, right? We got to fight. Each member has got to fight just to stay a member, right? okay? Each, each leader has got to fight just to, just, to, just to stay a leader. Each servant has got to fight just to stay a servant. It is so easy to become disheart, disheartened. It's so easy to become upset. But if we look at how the prophet handled, I'm still on the Lord's side and I won't give up on him. Come on, I, look, look. Here, let's, no, here, let's, let's finish it off. Look here. Y'all know Charles Wesley and the beautiful hymns, right? Right. And, 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 but but this, this, this hymn, a charge to keep I have, really secures, right? And is an inspiration to each person who is called upon to do God's work in whatever aspect. Whether you are a leader or a follower, there is a charge to keep. I mean, he boldly says in verse one, a charge to keep I have a God to glorify a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. Verse two, to serve the present age, my calling to fulfill, oh, may it all my powers engage to do my master's will. Verse three, arm me with watchful care as in thy sight to live and now thy servant Lord prepare a strict account to give, but takes it home in verse four, help me to watch and pray 
and still on thee rely. Oh, let me not trust betray, but press to realms on high. The psalmist is speaking directly to the savior who saved him. That in this journey, I've got a job to do. And I'm asking okay, that as I stay committed to the help me to watch and pray. Don't let me wave, right? Because, because and still on thee, I've got to rely. In this, in this journey, I can't, I can't rely on nobody else but you. You all I got, Jesus. You are all I got, right? Oh, and let me not my trust betray, but press to realms on high. I trust him. What is it? What is it in this in this, you know in this part of warfare? Confidently trust and believe on him. Where warfare wins that comes against us is when we're weak in faith. We're weak in belief. And then forces can come in and overtake us and pull us out. But if we know. Just something simple. He will not leave us, nor will he forsake us. Then on this journey, we can still walk. Christ did it in just those moments. He set the stage for us. I can be, I can have a crown of thorns, but I still see Calvary. I can be judged, guilty, even though I'm innocent, I still see Calvary. I can have a cross on my back, but I still see Calvary. I can be beaten, I can be whipped, I can be mocked, I can be spit on. I still see Calvary. I can be hoisted up, I can be, I can be hung high, I can be spread wide, I can have the pain of metal going through my body, but I still see Calvary. I can die on Calvary, but the grave cannot hold me. Because, because the challenge, right, right, there's a Friday, even though there's a Friday, there has to be a Sunday. In the early Sunday morning, he arose and he lives. He conquered it and didn't waver. And that's what we have to do. We, we can't waver on this thing, pandemic or no pandemic, right? Keep praying. Keep worshiping, keep singing, keep loving, keep forgiving. He did it for us so we can do it for him. Come on, let's praise God for his holy word. And we're ever so grateful for how worthy he is to be praised.